This is one of my favorite audiences. I feel that at KubeCon, you get a mix of folks that are interested in the high level and also really want to know the details and play with the technology. So today, we have an agenda that's tailored just for you. I'm Aparna Sinha. I lead product for Kubernetes, GKE, and our Anthos product. Today, we're going to talk about how you can use Google Cloud technologies to accelerate your journey towards enterprise transformation. Google Cloud has had outstanding success in helping companies of all sizes really modernize and move to the cloud. And every industry today is, the, is a digital industry. We're seeing technology transform entire sectors and change the basis for competition. And I think we see it all in our daily lives, too. If you think about how you got here today, whether you use a taxi service, how you educate your children, how you buy your groceries, all of that has really changed in the last five years. On a personal note, my children's school curriculum actually runs on Google Cloud. And so I can say from experience that Google Cloud is really leading this transformation. And it's not just for small companies. It's in companies that are hundreds of years old that are looking to transform their industry. And how do we do this? We do this through cutting edge technology. In Google Cloud in particular, it's technology that enables applications that are highly personal, that have intelligence, that are agile, that are efficient, and that give you access. So if you're on an IT team today, what does this mean for you? I think many of you in the audience already experienced this. But when I look at the role of the IT team from five years ago to today, it has really changed. It used to be that IT was responsible for cost reduction. And the funny thing is that IT is still responsible for cost reduction. But on top of that, you're also responsible for contributing to the top line. You're responsible for ensuring faster time to market and agility. And that's not easy, because you've got to do more with less. And you've got to make sure that you get to that agility without compromising security. So when I talk to CIOs today, they say, in order to enable true speed to market, I have to have an agile platform. And I have two questions associated with that. Number one, how do I either build this platform or get this platform? Should I buy something off the shelf that's enterprise ready? Or should I build it from scratch and continuously maintain it? And the second question is, how do I balance my investment in existing systems or systems on-prem and modernizing those systems versus what I'm using in the cloud? Those are the two most pressing questions that I hear. And actually, the answer to these two questions is related. In our view, you've got to pick a platform that is consistent, that actually runs both on-prem as well as in public cloud, and in fact, in multiple public clouds. That's the reality of today. And so in choosing this platform, the reason that's important is because it allows you to maximize the investment in your talent. So you don't have to retrain your engineers in every cloud environment. And ultimately, building this platform yourself is not a great idea, because it takes a lot of top talented engineers to build such a thing. Those engineers could be better utilized actually contributing to business differentiating capability. This is why, earlier this year, Google Cloud introduced Anthos. Anthos is a modernization platform. It's meant for you to develop applications and run them anywhere. And it's a platform that's very flexible. It can run in your on-prem environment. It can run in Google Cloud. It can run in other clouds. And it can also run at the edge, in your branch locations, in retail stores, even in stadiums. What's unique about Anthos is three things. Number one, that it's software-based. Most people that I talk to already have quite a bit of hardware. They've perhaps chosen a hardware vendor that they're working with. They've got contracts in place. Or in some of the edge locations, there's a lot of constraint in terms of what the footprint is. So having a software platform means that you have flexibility. You can purchase new hardware if you choose to, or you can try and reuse what you already have. The second unique capability is that it's built on open source. It's open, but it's opinionated. 
And the opinionation is actually really important. It means that with Anthos, we're building in all that Google has learned about how to run an SRE function, how to manage applications at scale, how to do container management. That's part of the platform. Open means that it's portable, but it's not so hard to manage. And then lastly, it abstracts the infrastructure so that your folks can actually focus on business innovation. And that last part is something that we learned from our experience with GKE. I think many of the folks in the crowd today have used GKE. Perhaps we can have a show of hands. How many? You've used GKE. Yeah, about 80% of the audience. That's quite good. So GKE was introduced five years ago, actually in November. We're celebrating the fifth birthday of GKE. And it has seen incredible success. You can see you know, we've got a lot of users across industries and of various sizes. It's top rated by analysts, and it's been acknowledged by customers. I think the most important thing here has been the success that GKE has enabled for its customers and the type of applications that they've built. For example, eBay has built a shop bot that enables personalized shopping on their mobile app. Pizza Hut enables faster delivery of pizzas to you during Super Bowl and also during any regular day. But these are things that, uh, as a product lead, it's really heartwarming to see our customers implement changes that affect our lives every day. And why is that possible? That's possible because even though they're using Kubernetes, they're not actually managing the Kubernetes. GKE is taking away a lot of the toil so that they can focus on building new experiences for their end users. That's the key learning. How did we do this? We did this actually by abstracting the infrastructure and automating more and more capabilities over the last five years. We started by managing the, the control plane and then providing auto repair, auto scaling, and auto management of the nodes. And then we saw that actually was really helpful to our users. So then we added additional capabilities, like auto scaling of GPUs. And the result was that machine learning workloads took off on GKE. So as we add more automation, we see more and more usage. We've now added four-way auto-scaling, so you can vertically auto-scale your pods. You can also auto-provision, so you don't have to worry about the efficiency of your cluster. It automatically takes care to make sure that you're running in the most efficient manner. And we're not stopping there. This list on the left-hand side is just the number of new capabilities added to GKE in the last two months. Here you see that we're making the platform more secure through container-native networking. We're making it more reliable, especially upgrades. I think earlier today someone mentioned, hey, what are we doing to improve upgrades? We're making them more reliable through a number of features, one of which is called surge upgrades. Another capability is release channels, which allows you to choose your level of innovation, how much of a cutting-edge release you want to use versus stability. And then, in terms of agility, we've been adding many more workloads. Today, 60% of workloads on GKE are stateful. That's databases and batch workloads. And we're adding support for Windows, which is moving to beta this week, and also batch workloads. So what we learned from this experience is that it's truly important to give users choice, but that choice should come with opinionation and management in order to be adoptable. That's the, bound, that's the foundation on which Anthos is building. Anthos is taking that GKE core and bringing it to the on-prem environment as well as to other clouds. But it's very much tailored towards the enterprise and the CIO. We take the managed platform and we add several layers on top. First of all, in an enterprise environment, you need centralized policy and configuration management. So that's a key element. It's at the heart of the Anthos control plane. Secondly, with many services across environments in your cloud, you need service management. And that's something that comes out of the box with Anthos. And then most importantly, in order to make the developers productive, you need a seamless developer experience. And that's something that we're enabling with Cloud Run on Anthos. So I'm going to try and give you a whirlwind tour of the capabilities of Anthos, but the whole day is devoted to going through these in detail. So this will just be a quick one. 
Here I'm going to cover five unique aspects of the platform. First, how do you get started? Is it a forklift, or is it easy to get started with? Second, now that you've started with it, how do you make sure that it's secure? Third, how can you make those developers productive? Fourth, what about your legacy applications? And then lastly, how do you operate at scale? So let's get into it. Anthos is not a rip and replace platform. No matter where you are in your journey, you can get started easily. And to enable that, we have this capability so you can bring your own clusters to Anthos. And we're going to demo that later today, but it's already in beta and many customers are using it. What that means is that if you have a Kubernetes cluster somewhere, and most enterprises have Kubernetes somewhere at this point, if it's a conformant cluster, you can connect it up to the Anthos control plane. And you can get a single pane of glass for visibility as well as for workload management. If you don't have a cluster, it's, as, as many of you know, it's easy to get started with GKE. You can start a cluster in less than five minutes, and then it's part of the Anthos control plane. Or you can use GKE on-prem, our Anthos on-prem offering, and bring that to the cloud. If you have no containerized applications at all, we'll talk about later today, you can migrate existing VM-based applications into Anthos as well. So there are many ways to getting started, and it doesn't have to be a lift and shift or a forklift. Second, once you get started, how do you make sure that the environment is secure? Anthos has a number of capabilities built in to ensure security by default. There's actually a long list, but some of the ones that I'd like to cover and show in this, in this animated GIF, Anthos brings the ability to have consistent security and configuration enabled from a single source of truth. Typically, this is a Git repo. You set your policies in the Git repo. And these are policies that could be security policies related to your mesh. They could be RBAC policies related to Kubernetes or quota policies. And from the single source of truth, these policies are distributed to all of the enrolled clusters and then enforced. What this GIF shows is an Anthos policy controller. This controller checks all of the access to, to, to any API in your cluster and makes sure that it complies with the enterprise policies that you've set. That's just one of the controls. There's also security controls built into the service mesh. And then, lastly, Anthos comes with binary authorization, which enables you to define security che checks upstream in the development process, making sure that only validated, verified images are integrated into your build and release process. Security is not just for security's sake. Security is what actually enables development to go faster, because it doesn't stand in the way. So once you've made a secure environment and you've brought your environment into Anthos, then comes the most important task, which is building applications. So how do we make that easier? There's two ways. First, Anthos comes with a Kubernetes application marketplace. That makes it really easy to procure applications that are already tested and available from both first party and third party providers. This GIF is showing you CloudBees. If you want to deploy CloudBees, it's actually a single click deployment from the Anthos marketplace. And you can choose which cluster you want to deploy to. It can be any of the clusters that are enrolled, including on-prem clusters or clusters in other clouds. And this service is supported by the partner, in this case, CloudBees, and comes with integrated billing from Google Cloud. This is, of course, if you want to reuse existing services. What about the most important piece, which is your own services that your developers will build? And that's where the easy application development experience of Anthos and Cloud Run comes in. So this is showing you how you can take a container image and deploy it into a cluster and have an internet-exposed application in less than a minute. It's an extremely simple user experience. It works for clusters in Google Cloud. It also works now for clusters on-prem. The fourth aspect, you've got your cloud-native applications, but what about your legacy applications? And that's where Migrate for Anthos comes in. This is actually brand new technology. It's quite differentiated. It doesn't exist anywhere else. 
And what it does is it takes existing monolithic workloads that are residing in VMs, they could be in VMware VMs, or they could be in VMs in another cloud. And it automatically migrates those, those applications into a stateful set in Kubernetes and brings it into the Anthos environment. There are certain benefits of doing this. It's not a magic solution. It doesn't get you a microservices. It's still a monolith. But the benefits of doing this is that, one, it's a lot easier to get in. And secondly, it actually does give you the advantages of bin packing. So you get a more efficient environment where you're using your monolith in a more effective way. Usually, the efficiencies from such a migration actually pay for the migration itself. And finally, once you have these applications into Anthos, how do you manage them at scale? That's the fifth part. And that is what we enable with service management, Anthos service management. This is really built upon the best practices that we found within Google through our SRE function. The service graph essentially is an at-a-glance view of all the services in your environment. It gives you a hierarchical picture where you can drill down into the resources and you can see the relationships between the services. You can see the traffic flow between the services and monitor various important metrics like the latency. And you can set SLOs on those metrics to see when there are violations and also policies to remediate. These are some of the best practices that we have learned through management of many microservices in our environment. And we found that the largest customers in GKE have, in fact, many, many services. And this becomes a necessity at that point. So those are the five kind of core pillars of Anthos that we're going to walk through in detail today. Each of the sessions later today will go in and show you the technology, show you what the, uh, what the capabilities are in the form of an actual demo. And you'll have a chance to ask the engineering team and the product team questions afterwards. In order to implement a transformation in an enterprise, we found that it's not enough to just cater to the needs of developers or to the needs of the platform team. That's why Anthos has so many different capabilities, something that caters to each role in the organization. For the platform engineering team, easy tools to help them manage the operations environment. For the developers, integration with, the, with their IDEs and the ability to choose from the marketplace or build an application in a serverless fashion. For service operators, all the goodness of the SRE tooling. And then, of course, for security and compliance, built-in capability. And we're finding that our customers are finding a lot of value from this. Some of our financial services customers are improving their agility by 13x. We've also found you know, in the most traditional of industries, a company like Airbus, being able to use serverless technology in their on-prem and cloud environment. This is truly revolutionizing their, their work. And in order to enable it, we've got an ecosystem of partners for Anthos at different layers. In the marketplace, we have technology partners. Increasingly, more and more enterprise applications are being containerized and made available in the marketplace for you to use directly. In terms of platform partners, Cisco, HP, and Dell have provided reference architecture. Should you want to buy new hardware, you can couple that with Anthos. And then several of our service partners, some of whom are even here today, are available to assist with the migration process. Anthos is really enabling new business opportunities. You saw several examples today in financial services, in retail, in health sciences, customers are using these capabilities to bring new experiences. HSBC, for example, is enabling a transformation in banking to reach their customers more easily. In retail and commerce, particularly with the edge, you're seeing much more innovation happening uh, with the retail season. And then lastly, in healthcare, we have companies that are using AI to improve the drug discovery process. The question is really, what will all of you do with this platform? And I think that is what we hope to inspire today through the discussion. Thank you.